Fight scene we've been working on yesterday. I did little tweaks to it, and then I exported that whole scene out as a USD. We're gonna bring it into Nuke, and hopefully gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to make your renders look better. Doing some extra matte painting, projections on Geo, all that fun stuff. This is, again, an animation that was provided to me. It is 1500 frames of pure action, super epic. And the things that we're gonna be doing throughout this project, lighting, look dev, comp, I wanna do some simulation stuff. Yeah, this is a huge scene, really big. I started doing some of the lighting and all of these, the light shafts coming down here, those are from like, I made these gobos and so they made a cool texture on the ground. And the material on those are just like gray, like they're totally gray, they're not very interesting. But because we have these gobos with textures, it actually makes it look like the rocks have texture. The other thing that we did was um, when we didn't have this light on right here is on his back is he he was you couldn't see his silhouette he was very much like bleeding into the background and i wanted to create some separation because of the the poses are so dynamic and so interesting and so i made my sunlight a little bit more like it's sun's totally setting and i used the sky texture and i added in a lot of air if you look down. And so that made the sun a little bit more hot and then these blue, beautiful like beams coming in. I rendered out one frame and then I also came in here and I did an export as a USD. Okay, so we got these scenes. You can select them both and do a scene node. It's gonna connect them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna end up projecting and doing some texturing on some of those cliffs. There's our camera view. So we can see our camera that's animated right there. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to read in. Now you're gonna see why isn't it working? Well, it's because we need to shuffle. This is a multi, here's the combine. But why does that not look like our, our render? It's because it's an AGX. So hit S, but we're not using ACES, we're using this AGX. And make sure it's the same AGX file that you're using in Blender. You can see where our depth is. Why is it so noisy? It's because we had volume. So this can also become a problem sometimes. So actually, I'll sometimes do a render without the volumes on my view view layers. Blender, you'll wanna create a whole new view la layer, one that is just volumes and one that is just your like geometry. And then you're gonna render those two things out and bring them together in Nuke. A bunch of things that we can use in here. We have the direct diffuse. We have, let's see, there's the direct diffuse. Glossy, so here's all of the glossy stuff. So if you wanna enhance some of that stuff, you can. Indirect glossy. These are pretty noisy. Mist pass. You can technically use this as a depth pass. It's not the same, but I could use this to grade stuff. Let me give you an example, shall I? I think if we plug that into here, see, we're gonna get that. Um, so if you use your mist pass, so if I hit G, you know, make a grade node, and because we have an alpha in this, you can do fun stuff, and you plug that into the mask of the grade. If you want, you could grade up your background a little bit, or uh, gamma it up, if you wanna make it look a little bit more misty, and maybe you wanna push that towards more blue. And just like that, we were able to add in, that was that mist pass, and you can quickly start making it feel like there's more volumetrics than there actually is. And if you wanted to get real fancy, so because you have your camera data, if you take this pass and you multiply a noise, like an advanced noise, we're gonna multiply it by this. Watch this. Okay, do a multiply. Ah, you guys see what I'm, you guys see where I'm going with this? And the cool thing about the noise, this, this little plugin, if you add speed, so it's gonna go quick. They have this, this is such a cool tool. So it's like the, it's like mist, like rising B translation. So now it's like stretching and it's kind of rising. That Oh cool, we have mist. And then I plug that into here. You're adding like a bunch of texture. The camera's moving. So what do you do? We have our camera and we have our noise. So we could add card 3D. And this card, it just needs the camera and it needs an image. So now we know where our card is in 3D space and we can move it around and we can see that now this mist is gonna move in 3D space with us. So, but now we have this 3D smoke and it's matching our camera. Now when we multiply this, but if I had all the frames rendered out, this mist would be matching perfectly. The problem is we don't want the mist to go in front of some rocks right there. Crypto mat, and I have found that Blender's crypto mats are really good. I've had problems with other software having weird glitchy problems. For some reason, Blender's 
Cycles has really good crypto maps. Size is amazing, I agree. Synthize is one of the best. Um, I actually used Blender Tracker on a project the other day, and I was very impressed with Blender's Tracker. Not gonna lie. I was like trying to figure out which software to use, and I uh, did a quick track in Blender, and yeah, it actually surprised me how, how well it held up. Let's say you're like, I don't want the mist to go in front of him, or this, or that, right? You just create masks, and then I hit A to show the alpha, and there you go. You have a mask and it's amazing. So take your crypto mat. Sorry, this is gonna get really messy. So those those of you that are new compositors, please forgive me. I think it's doing an over, but if you were to do like a uh, stencil, it's gonna cut it out. What we can do, paint on this geometry when we use what's called projections. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna project on some of this geometry right here. So what we need is a scanline render. This is how we're gonna render this thing out to the uh, object and connect the camera right there. So this is go there and hit tab. This is the render that we're getting out of the scanline render. You need what's called the project 3D node and you're gonna plug it in, oops, above this into our geometry and it's gonna say, hey, I need a camera. That the camera is animated, so it needs to project from one frame. So what you can do is a frame hold, is I'm gonna project our, our render on this, just to show you guys. This, and I'm gonna project it onto our, and let me turn on, sorry guys. I'm gonna do texture and wireframe. I'm gonna project onto that geometry. So if I plug this into here, you're like, okay, that's that's cool, we're getting our image. And if I get out of this view, we are projecting right onto our geo. Because if you can project any image onto the geo, well, now you can start painting onto your geometry. You can take one frame into Photoshop and we could add in a ton more detail. Like let's add it, we could add in some rocks. So there we go, we're gonna, we're gonna project this yeah, we could take something like this, this texture. You could take it and then you'd put on top, do, I know, a multiply, and then you add the multiply on top. The crypto mat comes back to save the day. And let's say we don't want it to affect the ground, any of that. And then you'd come in here and you could do some like, gamma. There you go. That's just super quick. You can do it that way, super easy. Things that I do all the time, and I did this on this last stream, but I love glows. And oh, let's say up at the top, we're like, you know what? I wanna add more shininess. So a subtractive is like saying, let's subtract the glossy. Let's subtract, let's subtract this from this. If I removed that from this image and then add it back on top, right? This image should look the same as this image. And because you removed it and you're adding it back on top, um, you can add in like the grade node or you know, gamma, whatever you want. You could come in here and here's the things that I add all the time. And this is, again, preference. I always love halation. This goes too intense. It adds this like red halo around stuff. And I think probably the other thing that I really like to add, chromatic aberration, there's chromatic blur. That's something sometimes I add. And this will do, let's see if I can give it. Like you had like a, a lot in the red channel. And I think, yeah, it's the anamorphic. This is such, this is like one of my favorite things. Favorite little plugins. It's an anamorphic um, one. And I was gonna see, see how it does some stretching, but if I don't want that, breatheless. Breathing is anamorphic lenses when you, when you um, because they're oval shaped, when you like change focus, they actually do what's called breathing. They'll stretch or compress. And so when you're, if you see that when they rack focus, they'll do things like that. So another cool little thing you can get in there. Sometimes I like to just go down and add all the things that I like and then dial them where it looks good. 
So now we're gonna do some chromatic aberration stuff, like a color correcting near the end. So we'll do color correct, and this is where I'll start playing with like the look of it. Like, and the cool thing with the crypto mats is you can do it that way. You know, I can come back, I can go back up to the top and be like, and I can do my crypto mat. Plug that sucker in and say, hey, you, change. I don't like the way you are. The other thing I really like to do, add that toe. Toe is going to lift up some of these black areas just a little bit. See that? It's subtle. And then you'd add, a, and I always do the Luma Grain. That's obviously too much, but yeah, that's kind of what I start doing. Yeah, once you add in that toe and the, the grain at the bottom, I just, sometimes I like to lay out the bottom part and then I can go back and I can adjust stuff because it helps me see what's gonna, like what my goal is and then make those little adjustments. I used to add the diffuse glow, but I like, it all depends on what you're trying to you're trying to get in there. Oh, that's not too bad. It does like the little bit of a soft. I know another thing that a lot of people do is the um, this is like the log to lin. Oops. Sharpening. Let me just show you what that is. So you take it and you go lin to log, so you're making it more linear. You add a sharpen. And then you go back to log. Come on now, two in. So all it's doing is it's making it flat, sharpening it in the flat state, and then re-putting back on. And basically, you're able to get some a nicer looking uh, sharp, a nice sharp look. There we go. We did some fun stuff in there. Um, yeah, and that was just one frame of this long animation. And uh, yeah, like I said, the fun thing is being able to do all these uh, projections. Let me just uh, show you, sometimes I'll do this. How long I want it on all frames. So let's just say, you know, I'm painting some stuff in here. That's cool. <laughs> um, so I could have just projected this on. And I'm wondering if I can real time. Oh yeah, you can. See, I, I'm projecting, but I'm also able to like paint. So that's what we learned. Don't render a pass with your volumes if you're doing a Z depth. Two separate, have them two separate things and you'll be okay. Boom. Scoosh.